Hello, welcome to the Wednesday, March 10th, 2021 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Well, today, of course, Microsoft Patch Tuesday with 122 vulnerabilities being addressed, 14 of which are critical and five have already been exploited. Two of the vulnerabilities had been disclosed prior to this Patch Tuesday being released. Now, out of the five being exploited vulnerabilities, four are, of course, Microsoft Exchange Server vulnerabilities. These vulnerabilities were patched on March 2nd. And, well, we talked about them already a number of times here in the podcast, had some uh, diaries about it. If you haven't patched them yet, you're pretty certainly exploited if your Exchange Server is exposed to the Internet. The fifth vulnerability that's already being exploited is a remote code execution vulnerability in Microsoft Edge and Internet Explorer 11. This vulnerability can be exploited uh, as the user visits a malicious website, so your classic drive-by style vulnerability. Now, aside of uh, these already being used uh, vulnerabilities, there's one that uh, I think isn't particularly interesting because we already had so many vulnerabilities over the last uh, 12 or so month in Windows DNS server. Yes, yet another critical remote, remote code execution vulnerability in Windows DNS server with a CFSS score of 9.8. This vulnerability affects the standalone DNS server as well as the DNS server integrated with Active Directory. Now, in order to be vulnerable, the DNS server has to support dynamic updates. Dynamic updates are typically only used sort of internally for DHCP servers and such to notify the DNS server of new hosts on the network and update IP address accordingly. What's not really clear from the advisory is if uh, these dynamic updates have to be properly authenticated. Just guessing, I think they will have to be authenticated. Uh, Otherwise, they're probably not even parsed. So any vulnerability would unlikely be exposed. But I haven't seen any details, haven't seen any uh, exploits or so about this vulnerability yet. And we also have a CSS score of 9.9, and that's in Windows Hyper-V. The remote code execution vulnerability, however, does require the attacker to be authenticated. So uh, this uh, puts uh, some hurdle here uh, to exploitation. An authenticated attacker would use a Hyper-V client that is configured to use the Plan 9 file system to connect to the Hyper-V server and then launch the exploit. In addition, there are also a number of important, not critical, Microsoft DNS server vulnerabilities, but they also do lead to remote code execution. And then, of course, uh, with the March 2nd update, we got additional Microsoft Exchange updates that were not yet exploited at the time. Nothing terribly important from Adobe today. We uh, do have security updates for Adobe Connect, Adobe Creative Cloud Desktop Applications, and Adobe FrameMaker. And I don't talk a lot about breaches uh, because I try to avoid a little bit the victim uh, shaming. Uh, but uh, today, one breach I think had some important lessons, and that's a breach at Verkata. Verkata uh, does uh, make uh, security cameras, and apparently they're used in a number of large uh, companies, uh, like for example Tesla and Cloudflare, but also in jails and hospitals. The problem here apparently was uh, that uh, due to a breach at Verkata, or maybe it became known otherwise attackers gained access uh, to a super admin account that gave them access uh, to all of Verkata's cameras. The details are still a bit murky and I couldn't find an official statement uh, from Verkata, but uh, the attackers 
who uh, did uh, succeed in this uh, breach, did publish uh, footage from cameras at various organizations. The big lesson here, I think, is not just that, well, uh, these devices often do have admin accounts that you as a user don't know about. That's kind of an old bit of news when it comes uh, to these type of network cameras, but also that you should be careful where you're placing any internet connected cameras. We do see this in a smaller scale happen over and over where uh, Ring and Nest and other uh, cameras that are commonly used to consumers are being accessed. So uh, please be careful where you place them, preferably outside and not in any uh, private space inside your house. And while I'm not familiar with the Vercada product, overall it's usually advisable uh, to have cameras uh, that uh, do not necessarily upload footage into a cloud-based storage system, but instead uh, maintain some form of uh, local storage. And then we also have a vulnerability in everybody's uh, favorite uh, source code management tool, Git. And this vulnerability would allow a malicious repository to execute code as uh, the repository is checked out or cloned by a user. The problem with Git is why we have these vulnerabilities that uh, with Git you don't just uh, maintain code, but you often have little scripts, hooks that are being executed as certain actions are being taken on uh, the repository. Now, there are filters in place uh, to prevent abuse of these hooks, but in this particular case, some of uh, these filters don't work uh, if the file system they're using is case insensitive and supports symbolic links. So make sure you apply any updates to Git as they become available. And as usual, be careful which repositories you clone. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.